Well, uh, when I came to Milwaukee in uh, 2006, I knew I'd be challenged with Emerald Ashmore and managing that test. Um, <clears throat> and my forester training uh, tells me that it's important to know where your host is, which is what the distribution is. Uh, otherwise, we'd have, because this pest is so elusive, we'd have really no no hopes of, of trying to be proactive and managing it yeah. if, we're, if we're just chasing it all the time. So we had to know where our host was, and hyperspectral imaging gave us that tool. Um, I first learned of hyperspectral imaging when I when I met Ian Hanu from NCDC Imaging at a, at a Wisconsin Arborist Association conference back in January of 2007, and he, he mentioned the technology to me, and I had asked him three times, what is it? And uh, so from that point forward, we started collaborating and trying to get grants through the Duck Pack, through the Forest Service, and none of those were successful because the, we think the Forest Service had a project that was that they had started in 2004 and had been unsuccessful, and perhaps perceived it as too risky. Don't know, uh, but for whatever reason, we didn't get funding. Uh, and so I put it in our capital uh, budget request for, for 2008, and uh, did get uh, funding to do the project. And, to come across uh, RFP mapping and NCDC imaging uh, who were able to do the project successfully. Of course they want to know does it work and, and how we're going to use it. And we, we did a U4 uh, study back in, in August of 2008 because this is before we did the hyperspectral imaging project and we viewed that as a low-tech approach to at least get a handle on the number of ash that were at risk in the city but that wouldn't tell us where they were just tell us how many we had and that study uh, indicated that we had 500, uh, 573,000 ash trees at risk in the city uh, so that helped us put a number on it help us get our arms around the magnitude of what this pest is going to mean for us um, and, and the hyperspectral imaging give, takes it one step further and not only tells us how many we have, but where they are. And, and since we took deliverable uh, of that data on a, on a GIS layer basis, we simply overlay that layer on our parcel map. Not only do we know how many ash we have, we know where they are, and we know who owns them. Mm -hmm. So we're able to use that information to, to reach as, as ash, give them information about First of all, let them know they have an ash tree on the property. Most, a lot of people aren't going to even know that. Then give them some information about emerald ash borer. This is what's at risk. And these are the options that you have currently available to you. You can, you can treat, you can plan to remove, but it'll give them some opportunity to pre-plan, much like we've had, for this pest. The only trees we really have ultimate control over are our street trees. And of our 200,000 street trees, 36,000 or 18% of those are ash. And like the street we're on here, uh, this is a, a street with mature ash. It adds a lot of character, a lot of value to this street, to, the, to this community. And the, the tools that we have available to us now for protecting trees, for protecting them, for protecting against Emerald Ash Borer, uh, weren't available uh, when Emerald Ash Borer was first discovered in 2002. And so we have, we have some benefits of that learning curve and technology that's become available since then. But our strategy is to protect our ash uh, over a period of many years uh, while we transition to resistant species. So we're preserving the canopy, we're pre preserving the benefits that canopy provides, and spreading out the removal and replacement of these ash on a long-term schedule that, that is not so disruptive of other operations that we have to shift and do a, remove all our resources and removal. We can still continue pruning, we can still continue planting, still continue beautifying and maintaining our boulevards, um, and while at the same time we're injecting and protecting ash and, and slowly transitioning to other species. Um, I think that the, the, the sequence that we went through to get to this point, uh, by doing our U4 study first, we understood what the, what the, the canopy benefits were. Uh, was, was very important. Um, we ran the U4 study on a, on, a, on a citywide basis with all species, and then we re-ran it, taking the ash out. So, so we quantified what, what loss of, of structural uh, value and, and functional value in terms of air quality improvement and stormwater reduction and so forth mm -hmm. that we would that would accompany a full-blown emerald ash borer infestation in our city. And that helped to for that helped the the, the budget office, the, the mayor's office, the alderman 
Common Council, help them understand what's at risk. And, and, and when they understood the, just the annual loss of benefits uh, that could result from a Cameron Ash protestation, then to spend $170,000 to be able to under, better understand and manage the pest uh, was, was an easy decision for them. Certainly, we follow the state procurement rules in, in, in purchasing the product. Of course, um, the, because the project had never been done successfully anywhere, and, and, and you led by by doing the project and really had, at that point an off-the-shelf product you could sell, there was no one else that had that. So you were then an essence sole source. While we do have to do competitive bidding, if, we, if if there is no competition, we can declare a sole source, which was the case here, and simply just just purchase it. I think she has to do the same, you know, same, follow the same process we did, and then understanding what those what those benefits are, you know, quantify that, and, and put that in perspective to what what the what the cost of treatment is versus cost of removing replacement. In Milwaukee, our to, to remove and replace our 36,000 ash trees was a 27 million dollar price tag, and so so we can inject a lot of trees for many years. And, and, and spread out that removal and replacement schedule over a reasonable period of time where it doesn't adversely impact our, our urban canopy uh, and, and still save money. So it was I don't know that, that they think about it on a regular basis. Certainly I think they appreciate it. Um, on a sunny day like this, you'll find people in their tree uh, cooling themselves in the shade. So intuitively, they understand the benefits. They, they, they realize those on a daily basis. It helps reduce their energy cooling cost and for their own home. So I think certainly, uh, you know, in communities where, where Emerald Ash Borer has, has eliminated all the ash trees, and, the, and these communities now have no, no street trees on their, on their, on their street, um, they're seeing, you know, water usage rates go up 30%, uh, energy cost increasing. So there is a, a very direct correlation. And, and while they don't probably think about it on any regular basis, um, we're, we're, we've got an, another project going, as you know, to try and increase public awareness of the, of the benefits of our canopy and to help them understand why, why they're valuable and why they, they, they do merit management and, and, and protection from a serious pest like Emerald Ashbor. We think we're doing the right thing and we've got a story to tell and, and, and are pleased to share what we've, what we've done in Milwaukee with others.